Hello everyone. Today we are going to dehydrate sliced russet potatoes. I'm Rebecca from Simple Suburban Living. Now you can see that I have already peeled the potatoes. This potato had a bad spot so I cut that off. You do not absolutely have to peel the potatoes but particularly if the potatoes you buy are not organic or especially dirty or anything like that, you might want to peel them just to be on the safe side. And so I peeled them and I have them soaking in just cold water, nothing in it, just to keep them from turning brown. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice them as evenly as possible. And I am not a very precise person, okay, and I don't have a mandolin. But I'm going to just try to do one eighth to one quarter of an inch slices. I don't want them too terribly thick. So I'm just going to go through and slice all of them. And as I'm slicing them, I'm just going to put, go ahead and put those into a bowl of water as well. So I'm not going to have you, now see like that one is going to be kind of weird because of the way I cut it, but that's okay. You know, just do the best you can, and by all means, if you have a mandolin, then you want to use that, but I don't, so I'm not. <laughs> so I'm going to slice all of these, and then I'll bring you back when it's time to go to the next stage. So I have the potatoes all sliced up as evenly as possible, and I can already tell you, like, there's some that is thick on this end and thin on the other, but I just did the best that I could. Again, not having a mandolin or anything. So I slice them pretty thinly. And we're going to move on to the next step, which is blanching them. I am going to put them in boiling water for one to two minutes until they are fork tender. There are reasons to blanch vegetables before dehydrating, but a lot of them you can kind of get away with not doing it. But potatoes are one that you definitely want to blanch because if you don't, they will turn black and they'll just look horrible, very unappetizing. And then you might not ever want to eat them because they just look like, you know, yuck. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring you over to the stove and I'm going to, well, first I'm going to drain these potatoes and then I'm going to put them into the pot of boiling water. You can see I have this large pot of boiling water. I'm just going to put all of my potatoes that I've sliced and rinsed into the pot of water. Now, this needs to come back to a boil, a full boil, before I start the timer. By the way, while I'm waited for, waiting for it to come to a boil, I did go ahead and stir these because I want to kind of separate any that are stuck together. Okay, the potatoes have come to a boil again. So now I'm gonna set a timer for one minute and I'll check and see if they are done. I did slice these pretty thin, so they might be done in a minute. Basically what I'm going for is I am going for fork tender. So to where I can stick a fork through it uh, pretty easily, but I don't want them mushy and falling apart, okay? okay? They've been going for a little bit more than a minute and when I tested, them they did not quite uh, they weren't quite at the point so I'm just going to let them go for about another 15 seconds and then I'm going to go ahead and drain them. Okay so I drained the potatoes and I am now running cold water over them to basically the idea is to stop the cooking process but in addition to that you also want them cool enough to handle because you're going to be using your hands to put them on the trays. So we want to get them good and cooled down and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have drained the potatoes. I have run cold water over them and then drained them again. And now I'm putting them on the dehydrator trays. Now this is one time you really don't want to overlap things. A lot of times when I'm dehydrating, I overlap things just a little bit, or sometimes a lot, depending on what it is. But this is a time where you don't want to overlap and you even want a little bit of space in between the potatoes so that they will dry properly. So we're gonna get as many of these as we can onto my trays. Now, the bad news is I may have 
prepared more potatoes than will fit on the tray. The good news is I can just put the potatoes that I don't use today, if, if I have some that don't fit and I can tell I probably will, I will put some onto uh, in a bowl of water and just stick them in the fridge and then dehydrate those tomorrow. I have some other dehydrating that I'm going to do tomorrow, so I'll just put the, if I have any extra potatoes, I'll just put those in. Kind of looking for small potatoes now. Some of my potatoes were different sizes, so I'll just picking a few small ones to fill in the gaps. By the way, one thing that was kind of interesting is I have this new to me book. It's, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it, but I will put it up on the video so you can see what it is. And before I did this, I looked up, you know, potatoes because it's a great book and it really tells you how to do things. And so I thought, well, let me, you know, that's going to start being my go-to reference book for dehydrating with, you know, how to prepare things and how long to, you know, cook them, you know, dehydrate them and the temperature and all that kind of stuff. And so anyway, <laughs> when I looked, she, the lady says, I've been dehydrated. I've dehydrated a lot of potatoes. And one thing I'll tell you is don't do russets. Well, guess what? These are russet potatoes. And so here's the deal. I have, it's been a while, but I have dehydrated russet potatoes before. In fact, it's the only type of potato that I've ever dehydrated. And they came out fine. And then I've also seen other people dehydrating russet potatoes. So sometimes you have to just, you know, do your own thing and figure, you know, give it a try. And like I say, I've done this before, so I know that this works. But really, the bottom line is russet potatoes are what I have right now that I need to dehydrate. I, well, and I'll probably can some as well, but I bought quite a few potatoes at Thanksgiving time. And, you know, this video will come out sometime in December, I think. But I, bottom line is I have a whole bunch of potatoes that I need to preserve or they're going, going to end up going bad. So I am using what I have and I always recommend that. Now if you were going out and buying potatoes specifically for dehydrating, you might want to buy a different type. I don't have the book in front of me so I can't remember exactly what she said, but I'll pop up a couple of suggested varieties. But like I said, I mean russet potatoes are cheap and I have had decent experience with them, so don't feel like, you know, you can't do them because, as you can see, I am dehydrating russet potatoes. All right. I'll bring it back when I'm done putting all of these potatoes on the tray, and then I'll show you how much I have left that I'm going to have to hold off and do tomorrow. Okay, so I do have a small amount of potatoes left over, and it's such a small amount, I think I am going to just uh, go ahead and spread these out among the five trays that I'm using. And there might be a slight amount of overlapping in some of the spaces, but I'll try to do it where there's thinner potatoes so it will work out okay. As an example, this is a super small thin potato, so I'm going to put another one slightly overlapping it as little as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now because I don't feel like it's worth holding on to these and drying them tomorrow. Okay, so the good news is I have barely any overlapping at all. You can see like those two kind of touch each other, overlap very slightly and so on. And since I went throughout the different trays and just added in the potatoes, basically that's the degree of overlapping that I have. So that won't be bad at all. Now, the good news is that, m like most things, when you dehydrate, pota potatoes will shrink up some. And so they will get a little bit smaller. And so I will keep an eye on them. And as they shrink up, if there is any overlapping, I will move things apart. Okay, so I've got all my dehydrator trays stacked up. And now I'm going to put the top on. 
this is one of those times when you need to refer to the manual for your specific dehydrator. Mine says fruits and vegetables at 135, so I'm going to go ahead and set it to 135. If you're uncertain, you could do 125. I consider doing it at 125, but I'm going to go ahead and do these at 135, and I'll bring you back in a few hours and show you what they're looking like. See you in a bit. Okay, it's been three hours, and you can see that they're starting to change colors. The thinner ones are starting to dry. They're not dry all the way, but I looked at them a few minutes ago, and I was able to spread out. Remember, there were a couple that were overlapping, and so they've already shrunk down enough for me to not have any that are overlapping. So I only spread out the ones on the first tray so I'm going to go ahead and spread out anything here so for example you can see there's a little overlap there I'm just gonna move things around a bit and uh, yeah so overall things are progressing really well I assume it'll take at least a few more hours for them to completely dehydrate but I'm glad that I went ahead and overlapped them just a bit. I don't think it would have been good if I had really heaped them up, but with the small amount of overlapping that I did, you can see that it's not causing any problem whatsoever. So I'm going to put these back in as soon as I finish uh, making sure everything's spread out, and then I'll bring it back, and probably about three more hours I'll check it again and give you an update at that time. Hello everyone. I wanted to just bring you in and show you the end result of these potatoes that I dehydrated. And uh, first I want to say this is a half gallon jar and it's fairly close to the top. Also, I want to just point out that on the uh, video, these look more yellow than they do look in real life. They look actually very, very nice. I'm really pleased with how they turned out. They look great from what I can see. Uh, there was no issue using russet potatoes, even though some would say don't use russets. I'd say you can experiment with different types of potatoes if you'd like, but I'm certainly happy with the way that these russet potatoes turned out. Now they took, depending on how thinly they were sliced, they took between four hours, like this thinness was ready after about four or five hours so not bad at all. And by the way, if you can break it like this, and hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Did you hear that nice snap? That's obviously very dry. It's wonderful. So I'm going to just put that in the jar here. The ones that took longer were ones that, remember, I don't have a mandolin or anything, so I cut these by hand. You can see how thick that is there. And so this took more like ones that are cut like they were kind of end pieces or whatever and they were cut thicker they took more like seven or eight hours so i think it will be worthwhile if you're going to do a lot of potatoes to buy a mandolin i would i would like to get one myself at some point i will probably get one myself but even if you don't have that and you have some pieces that are thick like that it's still a very workable thing and one other thing I want to address is these look like potato chips. Again, they're whiter in person. They're more yellow on the video than they are in person. And so you might be tempted to think that you could just eat these like chips. Let me tell you, they don't taste like potato chips because they're not potato chips. They were cooked through mostly uh, before they were dehydrated but they haven't been fried, they don't have salt, anything like that. So they really don't look, they really don't taste anything like potato chips. They just taste like potatoes. So what I think that I am going to do with these is I think that I am probably, one thing that I'll do fairly soon is make scalloped potatoes with them. That's gonna be one of my first things that I try out with these. And I'll be sure to post a video of that when I do. So I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you give it a try. I have more potatoes that I need to use up. So I will be dehydrating more. I'll probably end up with about two of these half gallon jars of potatoes when everything is said and done. So I'm looking forward to that. I do plan to vacuum seal these jars. So 
Hopefully these won't crush up. I guess I'll find out <laughs> just from the pressure of the vacuum sealing. I don't expect that they will, but at any rate, they should stay good for a very long time. I don't know that we'll have them that long, but I suspect that they would be good for at least a few years in sealed properly. They're bone dry, and if I seal them well, they should last on the shelf for a number of years. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you would like this video. And of course, if you have not already done so, if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day.